Convergent validity and discriminant validity are terms that commonly appear in empirical research. In fact, these are some of the most commonly used validity terms in at least management literature. What are these terms and what are the concepts that they refer to? Let's take a look at an example. So this example comes from Ulyarenko and our co-authors. They present this one paragraph which states, states that uh, some statistics provide evidence for discriminant validity, some other statistics provide evidence for convergent validity, and then there is no problem with these two validities. Unfortunately, there is a lot of confusion about these two terms and what specifically they refer to, how exactly they should be evaluated, and if there's a problem, what should be done about that problem. So quite often, these techniques, uh, when researchers apply these concepts, they rely on techniques that can be categorized as rules of thumb. Why is, why is that? It relates to the history of how these two terms were introduced to the literature. The terms first appear in this article by Campbell and Fisk from 1959, and that article actually presented the terms without any definitions. So the article was not really focused on validity, but it was focused on a validation technique using multi-trait multi-method method matrix, which is a special kind of a correlation matrix. And then they presented a, a set of rules of thumb, and if those rules of thumb apply, then we could declare that there is convergent validity, and if another set of rules of thumb apply, we could also declare that there is discriminant validity. The problem with this paper is that it really did not explain how these concepts should be applied outside the context of multi-trait multi matrices. So research after that has started to attach other kinds of meaning to these, these terms and uh, convergent validity has come to refer generally to whether items correlate highly enough for them to be considered measuring the same thing and discriminant validity has come to mean uh, that items don't that are supposed to measure different things don't correlate too highly, roughly. Let's take a look at the original definition. So this is the original definition of the rules of thumb for discriminant validity and uh, more important than what these actual rules are is that we need to understand what these, these T's are in the multi-trait multi-method matrix and what the M's are. So the T's are the traits that we would measure. For example, we could have a score for, for performance, we could have a score for innovativeness, and we could have a score for entrepreneur orientation to give some examples. So these T's are different traits. And each trait is measured with at least two different methods. So we have method M1 and method M2, and we want these uh, methods, if they measure the same trait, we want the scores to be highly correlated. If two methods measure different traits, then the uh, correlation between those two measurement results should not be as high. So, so what exactly are these methods M1 and M2? We know that these, these are different traits, we deal with constructs all the time, so every researcher understands what it means that, that uh, traits or constructs are, dif are, are distinct. These methods M1 and M2 were actually originally defined to be something called maximally different methods. So quite often when we consider empirical research in management, do we have maximally different methods? We, if we have a cross-sectional survey, then all the items, all the constructs that we have in the, in the data, they are measured the same way. So we use the same kind of measurement procedure for all of our constructs. All the items, all the data come from the same kind of procedure. So we really don't have maximally different methods. So, so what should researchers do in that situation? The problem is that reviewers are still pushing our researchers to uh, address convergent validity and discriminant validity. If the researchers go to the original source of Campbell and Fisk, they realize that those definitions don't apply to their particular study. So, so what do you do? Reviewer says you should address convergent validity and you have just one cross-sectional survey, you look at the original source which says that two maximally different methods should be applied. You can use the original source and uh, for that reason 
the understanding on the, or the meaning of the term convergent validity and the term discriminant validity, they have evolved over time. So we're not actually using the original definitions anymore in most applied research. Instead, uh, we have this current practice that convergent validity refers to generally uh, to a correlation between items that are supposed to measure the same thing, regardless of whether we measure them using the same method or different methods. So that is the practice. And this of course makes it very difficult to say uh, what is the difference between convergent validity and uh, reliability if you have uh, these uh, parallel forms or, or distinct tests kind of reliability statistics like coefficient alpha. And discriminant validity has come to mean uh, refer to the fact whether two scales or a correlation calculated from two scales is sufficiently low to be uh, able to conclude that these two scales actually measure two different constructs. So, so this is how the meaning of the terms has evolved over time and uh, because of the, this evolution of meaning the current practices in, in discriminant validity and convergent validity statistics and evaluation is actually quite far from the original work by Campbell and Fisk. Also these are used very inconsistently. So not only are the statistical procedures quite different from what was originally proposed but what is a high correlation also varies. And this article by Carson and Herman puts it nicely. So they present an example that one article says that correlation of 0.28 is interpreted as convergent validity, as evidence that two, me two items measure the same thing. And then in another, another study, a correlation of 0.75 is interpreted as evidence for discriminant validity. So this is interpreted as evidence that two items measure different things. So this is basically a pick your result kind of scenario. You just go for the, the statistic, go for the rule of thumb, that makes your paper looks nice and then you report it. So of course uh, this is not good research practice. We need to have a, a lot more rigorous approach on what actually convergent validity and discriminant validity mean and I will talk about that in another video.